right, so let's try a couple of uh, more challenging examples. So this looks absolutely terrible. Um, this is what we call a complex fraction. It's got fraction within a fraction. Students never love these. But they look terrible, but they're actually not too bad. Um, and so what we're going to do, we can think about, you can think about fractions in a couple different ways, right? You can think about them as parts of a whole, or you can think about them as division. So if I can get one fraction divided by another fraction, then this is not too bad. Um, so on the top, um, I can think of this whole top as being one fraction, right? So something they forget to tell you sometimes is that fractions are secret grouping symbols. So that there are actually secret parentheses around the top of the fraction and the bottom of the fraction. And so what we have is we have, we're dividing by this kilograms per liter. Um, but how do you divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal. So we can think about this. as times liters per kilogram, okay? Um, and then I claim we actually don't need these parentheses here anymore. Uh, do you know why we don't need these parentheses here anymore? Well, it's actually because multiplication has what we call the commutative and associative properties. So, um, it means we can multiply in whatever order we want um, and we can multiply two different things. We can multiply the, this first fraction by the second one first, or we could multiply the two ends together first. So when you have all multiplication, um, the order doesn't matter, and so we don't need to group things with parentheses. So here we had multiplication and division mixed together. Um, so we kept the print. We had keep, needed to keep the parentheses, but now that. We have all multiplication, we don't need them anymore. And then you can just play the fraction canceling game, right? So this is, this is the crux of dimensional analysis. What we're doing is we're treating the leaders in the top and the leaders are the leaders in the top and the leaders in the bottom. Leader per leader is one, right? Leader over leader makes one, just like two over two, two divided by two or seven divided by seven, or the square root of three divided by the square root of three, if you have the same thing in the top and the same thing in the bottom, that makes one and they cancel out. So like I said, if we treat these just sort of like a variable in your brain and use algebra on them, it's, you're not learning a new skill. You're doing the same thing. It just looks more complicated because these um, abbreviations uh, for units are not as nice as X, Y, or Z. So we can cancel out the leaders because you have a leaders on the top and the leaders on the bottom. And then we can also do the same thing with the kilograms. And so what we have left is milliliters per second. So, and then you could write that out. So that's the units you're working with, milliliters per second. All of that big mess turned into milliliters per second. All right, so I have another example. So this was my first example over here. So another more complicated example um, than the first couple that we did. So let's see, I've got milliliters to the negative one. And I'm going to put the multiplication in here just so that we can see that they're distinct from each other. The milliliters to the negative one. And then um, just an M by itself is the basic unit of measure for distance. Do you remember what it is? It's meters okay, times seconds to the negative one times milliliters over seconds or milliliters per second. Okay, and so we want to simplify this as much as we can and break this down a little bit. Um, so milliliters, the M and the L since it's standing for milliliters, go together. So that's going to be 1 over m to the, our milliliters, right? So usually when you do algebra, if you have two letters next to each other, the exponent would only work on the thing that it's right next to. 
But when we're talking about units, right, if, if you're talking about milliliters, the M and the L go together because they are both needed to represent that unit of measure, that milliliters that you're talking about. If you took, drop the L into the bottom and left the M on the top, you'd have meters on the top and liters on the bottom, which wouldn't make a lot of sense. So if you're talking about a unit of measure, the two letters do go together. If you're in an algebra class and you're talking about X, Y's, and Z's, they would not. So that's one thing that's a little bit different. You have to think about these units of measure as one whole thing. Um, all right, so then we still have the meters in the top. And then the seconds to the negative one, we're going to drop that into the bottom. And you can put these guys over one if that helps you. It doesn't hurt anything. Oops, when we drop it into the bottom, what happens to the exponent? It becomes positive. So don't forget that. And we still have our milliliters per second. And now we can, we can again, play the canceling game. So I've got milliliters in the bottom and milliliters in the top. It's all multiplication between everything. There's no addition signs, so it's okay for me to do this. If there's addition signs in, in our algebra, right, when we're doing algebra, we can't do canceling. We have to factor out and remove the factors of one. But here, because we have milliliters in the bottom, milliliters in the top, we're, we're okay, and it's all multiplication. We're good to go. Um, when you do these dimensional analysis problems, there won't be addition in there, so uh, you kind of don't have to worry about it. All right, so what are we left with? We're left with uh, meters on the top, and we're left with seconds times seconds. So do you know how we would write that? Well, how do you write, well, how would you write x times x? You would write it as x squared. So it's the same thing here. We would write it as second squared. So we have meters per second squared. or square seconds, I suppose you could say. Um, and this is actually the unit of measure for acceleration. So if you take a physics class and you were talking about um, acceleration and you were doing some uh, problems with acceleration, uh, acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So just an interesting kind of little physics fact. So, um, so these are kind of more complicated problems, but remember, if you treat it just like an algebra problem with the exception that if um, you're talking about a unit of measure, the two letters stay together. Unlike in algebra, they would, they would be separate. There would be an implied multiplication here. So it's pr you, you already know how to do this. It just looks pretty complicated because these units of measure have all these crazy abbreviations, but um, treat them just like you would a variable, and you will be able to do these just fine.